I mean, look at the RAM usage. 107 gigabytes used. How good is the best PC in Premiere Pro? Now by the best, I mean 64 core Threadripper Pro. We have two RTX 1390s in SLI or end length. We have 256 gigabytes of ECC RAM. We're gonna be testing this in Premiere Pro. Let's have a look. Artgrid is an online stock footage platform that offers the highest quality stock video from HD to 8K, ProRes, Log and RAW formats. Active subscription provides you access to unlimited downloads and a royalty-free worldwide license. The license doesn't expire even when the subscription has been cancelled. Artgrid catalog is updated daily and the subscription can be configured to fit your needs. Get two months for free when joining Artgrid through the links in the description below. By the way, if you haven't seen the build video of this, then I highly recommend you go check that out because this is not actually my piece. PC. This goes for Damien who was the designer of some of the Lion King characters and we just spend loads of time configuring and building him this PC. Go feel free to check that out. Absolutely awesome guy, very talented creator. But part of the testing process of making sure this all works is testing this in loads of different programs and Premiere Pro is one of them over here. So if we go to task manager, we can see that our CPU, we have a Threadripper Pro 64 cores. There they are. 128 threads, 256 gigabytes available. And also, as you can see, a GPU 3 and 4, we have two RTX 3090s. When we're looking at our Premiere Pro, it's 22.2.0. What we'll also do is keep this uh, hardware info open on the side um, so we can see like the maximum temperatures later on, how much will be pulled, you know, from the socket and so on. By the way, this is air cooled, so it will be interesting to see like how high the temperature will be on the CPU because the CPU can draw 280 watts. Okay, let's start jumping through these codecs then. This is 4K, 4 to 0, 60 frames per second, HSA 264. Timeline performance, very, very good. If we press play, obviously full resolution. Let's put the uh, drop frame indicator on as well. As you can see, our video decoding on this first NVIDIA card is playing this back. No problem really, this is as good as it can get, very very smooth. 10 bit 420, 24 frames per second HSA 264, playing it back, no problem, timeline very good as well, like as good as it, it really gets. Bear in mind, we have a color grade applied as well. So this is just load curves and some basic uh, correction. Just something that you might, you know, do yourself. Full resolution, 4K, 10-bit, 422, 30 frames per second. No problem. Plays back instantly. No problem. This is uh, 25 frames per second, 422, 10-bit, A7S3, 4K. Let's press play. It plays back no problem when we're, when we're doing that but just like the timeline, actually, it's quite smooth. When we go a little bit faster, actually, do you know what? This is very, very good timeline performance. Wow. Okay, this is where I really see like what's going on in here. That's very interesting. No problem playing it back. SI codec, so 25 frames per second still, but all intra. Very smooth. This is with a color grade 10 bit 4 to 2, 60 frames per second. Very smooth as well. Let's press play. Oh, what's this? Yep, no problem. Timeline scrubbing through and clicking through. Very, very good. This is H.264. Not very good codec to play back. 10 bit 4 to 0. This is accelerated on the NVENC actually. So if we look at this. You can probably see, yeah, there we go, video decode on there. No problem. I mean, just as good as it can get. Now, this is Canon R5 422 10-bit 60 frames per second H.265. Usually very hard codec to play back. But this is going to go all on the CPU. So, let me zoom in a little bit more. So it's pretty good. It's like very, very good. But if you've if you had the Intel 12th gen, it's not actually as good, but still very good. For example, if we press play 
Look at that, it should all go on the CPU. Can you see all these CPU cores trying to play that back? That's what's going to happen. 41 gigabytes used there. The GPU isn't doing any of the decoding. It's probably using it only to play back the color grade. But the CPU, that's what's happening. So I'll put it over here so we can see overall usage. But because the 64 cores, there's still plenty of, you know, performance. As you can see, like, very, very good. Once it's, like, played it and, like, placed it on RAM, still very good. But I'd still give Intel's 12th gen a little bit of an edge when you're playing it back. Obviously, when you have many layers and color grade on this, this is a monster. Like, this can chew through everything. It's got so much like more raw horsepower so this is canon c200 4k canon raw 60 frames per second dci 4k wow super super smooth on this here this is two on top of each other no problem playing this back it's super smooth super smooth and CPU is like, there's so much more that the CPU can do. Red 4K, I'm not even going to press play because that, that's just butter. Buttery, buttery smooth. Now, this will be interesting. This is A7S3, 120 frames per second. Let's press play because I haven't seen many PCs play this back like full resolution. But look at that. 60 gigs used on RAM there. Did you see that? But... Plays back no problem. This is H.264, 420 and 422. Let's see. Playing back. Look. Few frames dropped here. Any more? Just five frames, but playing it back full on speed. 62 gigabytes used of RAM, but still plenty of power left over. This is 420 H.265. It's very good timeline playback. Instantly, like, loses a few frames. Okay, it actually drops a few frames here and there. Let's have a look. Okay, it does play it back. I think this will be accelerated, yeah. So this is played back on the actual NVENC encoders, but they're not so good playing back, like, 120 frames per second. So I wish it was actually played back on the CPU or software because it will do a much better job. No problem here. Timeline resolution, no problem. But as you can see, that's why you need lots of RAM in Premiere Pro, because 42 gigabytes is easily used here when working on 120, 120 frames per second. This is 422 10-bit. Pressing play, like waits a little bit and then starts playing back. But this is the most frames I've seen it play back. But look at that. 65 gigs used. Very interesting, but still very good playback. So this is 5K Red Raw. Pressing play, it's like instant. Honestly, one of the best things about these Threadripper and AMD processors is how good the Red Raw playback is. It's just buttery smooth. Like, it's so instant. If you're doing any red editing, this is insane how good this is. Obviously, look at that. We've spiked 100% used on the CPU and 57 gigs of RAM used, but no problem. There's only two sticks of them actually used in there. This is 6K Red Raw with a uh, color grade on. Look at that timeline performance. Full resolution, 6K. It's buttery, buttery smooth. We're pressing play. It plays it back, no problem. Look at the CPU, it's not doing hardly anything. This is amazing. Like, that that's where this guy shines. I haven't seen any PC play back this red raw so smoothly and when pressing play so instantly with the color grade on. That's absolutely amazing. So this is B-RAW, 6K. Um, this is like buttery smooth, pressing play. No problem. Let's see two B rows on top of each other. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Timeline, super smooth. Pressing play. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. No problem. Three B rows, six Ks on top of each other. Pressing play. It plays it back. It's not really particularly even hard for the 
CPU to do. But now this is what I'm curious about. We're moving on to 8K. So this is the part that you would actually build this PC for 8K video editing. That's why you would you would have this. So timeline performance. Wait a second. We're cheating here. Full resolution. Timeline performance. This is Canon R5 8K Canon RAW. Timeline performance not that great. I'm going to press play and then I'm going to see what's going to happen. Will it actually play this back? It's waiting. It's waiting. It's waiting. And then starts play playing back. It's not that great. I mean, look at the RAM usage. 107 gigabytes used. Have you seen that, that much RAM used? Yep. Get yourself, uh, you know, Canon R5 footage and start playing it back. And look at that, 108, 111, 12. I mean, this is the most I've ever seen any PC play this back. Okay, it's taking some time, but look, it's, it's managed to actually play this back, or at least some of it. Nope, even a Threadripper Pro, this just shows how inefficient this codec is. Playing it back, full resolution, 8K, and having even this monster, it can't play this back. Look at that. We're using over 100 gigs of RAM. We can't play this back. Let's put half the resolution. Start playing it back now. Yeah, that's more like it. We're still like losing some frames. It takes quite a long time to actually start playing it back, but then it actually does play it back. 70% used on the CPU. Let's have a look at the hardware monitor. CPU package power. Yep, we're pulling 267 watts at the moment. So this is Red Raw 8K and let's have a look at the timeline performance. A full resolution, please. Okay, timeline is slightly choppy here and there. But actually very very like don't doesn't feel that smooth. But let's press play. Interesting, it takes a little bit of time to play it back 8K, but I guess if you have an 8K screen and you want to see this played back on an 8K screen full resolution as you're editing or something like that, you can do that on this PC because it actually plays this back. Now, this is not particularly impressive actually on this 8K. Let me take the color grade off. It's still not that great. I've seen some other PCs do similarly. I'd say even the 5950X is like as good as this. Nothing like particularly special. I was more impressed with the 6K and 5K playback. But look, full 8K resolution playback. We're doing it. And now, finally, this is a 12K B RAW. Now, I haven't seen any PC play this back at full resolution. Let's see what happens. Let's press play. Okay, we're not playing this back. Let's see what the task manager here says. What are we doing? 123 gigabytes used. Did you see that? But it's interesting, like, I don't know what is using up all this RAM. Because even if you load all of this, these video files to your RAM, it's not going to be 122 gigabytes. So that's a little bit interesting because those clips are only like a few gigabytes in, in size, you know. Timeline performance though on full resolution, insane, absolutely insane. Okay, half the resolution. Even half the resolution is losing some frames. Okay, we dropped one frame, but it's playing it back half the resolution. So then, conclusion about this PC. 64 cores, 128 threads, 256 gigabytes of RAM and two RTX 3090s. Is it best bang for buck? No, not really. Actually, this video probably didn't show how good this PC is, but rather how good the other PCs are that I have on the channel. Because this over here costs roughly about 20 thousand dollars or 17,000 pounds here in the UK. So actually having something that's only five grand of a PC like with a 12900K and RTX 3090 with maybe 64 gigabytes of DDR5 is doing like maybe 90% of the performance of this over here, especially if you're working with a mirrorless camera footage. Now if you're doing red footage and so on, then obviously this 
PC is much better. But this PC is not actually meant for video editing because this is not really optimized for that, but this hardware configuration isn't optimized for that. This is more for 3D rendering and 3D modeling. So if you're like a 3D guy who needs like Arnold and Maya rendering, this is insane. Like you can actually utilize two GPUs at once, which Premiere Pro doesn't do really that well. It uses one and actually just the other one is kind of jogging around. The NV link doesn't really do much in here. But what we can see over here is really what's the difference is. And if you compare the best PC, what you could do, then this is probably one of them. Another thing I want to now check is the actual uh, like temperatures. How did the temperatures hold up? Is it enough to have an air cooler over here? So as you can see, we have pulled 279 watts maximum from the socket and the maximum peak of the CPU temperature is 70 7c which is absolutely amazing now it's idling about 40c here and we're pulling about 85 watts or something like that from the socket so quite high wattage even at idling but as you can see you don't really need a liquid cooler for this in fact a liquid cooler would be a worse case for this just because the liquid cooler would have such a small area that would cool this cpu down but this is a massive massive plate on this nocto cooler on the cpu that will really like match the ihs and the size of this plate so very happy with this let's have a look at the rtx 3090s as well when we finally scroll down here uh, first and with the rtx 3090 60c and the second one 54c maximum of the second one draw was 131 and the first one gpu power was 313 as you can see so it was using the first gpu much more than the second one yeah i can see the top one is much more warmer than the top bottom one as well so then if you by any chance are interested in any of those parts or see how much this costs then check the links in the description below by the way if you want to get your mind blown just go check how much the cpu on its own costs in the description below and you can see that anyway thanks guys for watching likes if you enjoyed it subs if you'd like to see more and i'll see you next time bye bye